Hey guys, this video is going to go on our anime and manga playlist. However, if you're not into anime or manga, don't be put off because it's a bit broader than that. It's actually a cultural thing. It sort of comes into it. So what's triggered the video though is for the last three or four weeks, <laughs> the the number one topic of conversation about it, among lots of people in Japan has been a series which was originally a manga and then it was made into an anime series and then there was a series of movies and they put one on television about four weeks ago on a Saturday night and it's called Kimitsu no Yaiba and it's a, about Demon Slayer and the story is that the dude, our hero, our hero, young dude with big eyes, bright coloured hair, normal anime hero. The young guy, his sister was turned into a demon, so his mission is to try and work out how to reverse her back into a normal person again. So they put one on TV about four weeks ago on a Saturday night, and it's about, two, it was two and a half hours or three hours long and really, really long and really, really serious. And some of you guys would be really surprised um, by the content, like lots of blood, right? Lots of blood, <coughs> lots of blood. And a couple of little people in our house watched it and ended up with nightmares all night because it's pretty severe, you know? It's not Disney, it's, it's sure not Disney, you know? Um, so they had that on about four weeks ago and then a week later they had, on a Saturday night, they had the next one in the series. Um, and then, and then uh, they released at the cinema. They released the the latest movie, right? The latest version, latest movie, latest episode, maybe we'll call it. And it grossed one hundred million dollars in t in the first ten days, right? So I'll give you an idea how popular it is. And everywhere we go, everywhere we go, everyone's talking about it. So. We know kids as young as as young as young six that have gone to see it with their parents. It's it's supposed to be uh, over 12. You're supposed to be over 12 years old to go see it. But if you go with an adult, you can go, anybody can go see it if they go with an adult, right? So we know kids as young as six have been to see it with their parents. Uh, we know high school kids, we know university students and adults that have just gone to see it on their own with each, you know, with their adult friends. So it's sort of everybody's going to see it. So like, probably like a Japanese version of Shrek or something, you know, where the kids like it and the adults like it too, something like that perhaps. But just so different from animation. I mean, we're not an anime channel, right? So if you really want a, a real review of it, um, then you really need to, to, you know, wait, watch it. Watch an episode. You probably find it on the internet, probably on net Netflix. Um, drag, look for, um, not Dragon Slayer. It's um, Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer. Look for that on, on Netflix or something. You probably find a, an older one you can watch. So, yeah, so everyone we've been talking to, well, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I went, went to the movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did you see? Oh, Kimitsu no Yaiba. Oh, okay, how was it? So it's just the topic at the moment. And then, of course, all the companies get onto it with the marketing. There's all that licensing and marketing that goes on. So. You know, all the convenience stores have got posters all over the place. Um, all the products that we usually buy anyway, all the, the snack foods and things, have all got the, the characters and the sit and the symbol all over it. Uh, similar to what you saw on the thumbnail of this video. Um, that sort of stuff is just everywhere. So everywhere you turn, you see it. So that's all good. And, and again, if you're into anime, we, ha we have a manga and anime playlist, but it's not our thing, really. It's not our specialty. Uh, we've made some videos about different anime that that, uh, that you might have seen, but yeah, we're, we're not specialists by any means. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that movie in particular, go and have a look at it, probably. Get it get it from Netflix or get it online and check it out and you'll, you'll see for yourself. But the reason for this video isn't just that. The reason for this video is, well, first of all, how amazing the... the uh, uh, what do you call that? The, the categorizing things, movies and things. You, the, for example, there is no way those movies would have been shown during general viewing time in Australia. You know, don't know about the, the rating systems in your countries, but, you know, way too much blood. 
you know, it's not like Tom and Jerry where, you know, it's old Tom and Jerry cartoons where, you know, they get buffed on the head with a big hammer and, oh, you know, and birds fly around and they fall down. No, it's not like that. It's like full on, you know, s s cut them open with a with an axe and blood pours out sort of, <laughs> sort of stuff. Really severe, right? It's like, whoa, you know, kids are watching this. And that was on that was on television during mainstream viewing time, you know. Um, so that that's the first thing that's amazing, you know. It's it's not Disney, it's not like Disney, you know. It's full on, um, and that's really common too. Japanese television and things like that. You, there is a lot of stuff that you just wouldn't get in other countries, you know. In some other countries, they wouldn't get past the censors. They wouldn't let kids watch it, you know. Some a lot of it, so. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's another contradictions and paradoxes again too, because you know, in some ways Japanese TV is really not censored in, in things like that, and then in other things it certainly is, you know. It sort of seems like when it's animated, almost anything's okay. A lot of their, their sus stuff, like semi-pornographic stuff, is like that too, anime and manga is, is sort of freely available. It's sort of like if it's a, if it's a picture, then you can pretty well do anything, which is sort of interesting, isn't it? So anyway, there's that. The other part of it, the cultural part of it that's sort of interesting is the ghost and demon thing. You know, ghosts and demons in, in literature and in, in, in uh, fiction in Japan are really, really common. And also in real life is really, really common. So, so often in anime and manga and in other movies as well, you know, with people in it, whatever you call that, movies with people in it and TV shows with people in it, demons and ghosts are a really common feature. Um, and things like haunted houses and things, they actually, this year they actually opened a drive through haunted house in Tokyo. So because of COVID, they are trying to think of things like that to do where people could, you know, stay in their car and be entertained. So they, they developed a drive through haunted house in Tokyo so people could pay and just drive through and have scary monsters jump out at them. And, and ghosts, which was sort of the central theme, you know, ghosts and zombie type characters, young girl ghosts, you know, um, is really common. The girl in the white nighty walking around going like this, you know, and you see that mainstream television here all the time for no apparent reason, quite often. I mean, they went nuts recently because it was Halloween, so that was an excuse to do a lot. But 365 days a year, there's often an excuse. Um, to have ghosts and demons, you know. Um, so there's that. And then in the traditional Japanese culture, it features too. So we've, we've showed you before Olbon, which is uh, in August. August? Is it August? Yeah, it's August, where the, the, the ghosts of the ancestors, the spirits of the ancestors come back to visit, you know. And, and you know, everybody, well, everybody goes along with that. It's, it's like... A lot of people genuinely believe it. You know, we know there's an old guy in, in our family who's really into it. And before Olbon happens, he goes to the cemetery and he, he cleans the grave. This is, and what he does is really traditional stuff. Oh, there's a big rock on the road there. What he does is the traditional way of doing it. And a lot of other people do it too. So when he goes there just before Olbon, the cemetery's full of people and they go there and they clean up the, the, the grave site, the family grave site, and they clean everything up and they, they wash it all down and they put flowers and they prepare it for the coming of the spirits of the ancestors. And then they actually, on one particular day, they greet them at the cemetery and actually take them back, the spirits of the ancestors, back to their house, to their kamidana or their butsudan, their, their shrine in their house and have ceremonies there. And they'll often have the priest come, the Buddhist priest guy come and do his thing. Um, they have all sorts of, you know, candles burning and incense burning and, and special food for them there, you know, fruit and things out for them, sake, bottles of sake, things like that, and and really into it, you know, and that's really mainstream. We know, we know lots of family members and friends who do it, um, and then we know different ones who do it to different extents. It's hard to know when it's a belief, when it's actually a belief, and when it's actually just a cultural thing, you know who's doing it for what reason, you know, sort of like in some countries, maybe going to church or going to temple or doing those things, it's hard to know whether people are doing it because it's their genuine belief or whether it's because their cultural thing that they do it, you know, it's a bit like that in Japan, but 
it's a general thing, you know, the believing in the spirits of the ancestors coming back and they stay for a period of time and then we have the Bonadori, you know, and then the dance and and then we say goodbye to them and they go away again, you know? And that's the and that's it, you know, that's the Japanese cultural thing. We do that every year. So there's a there's a, a strong belief in ghosts and you often hear people say, you know, things because of the ghosts or because of this or because of that. Um, haunted places in Japan, you know, they're always talking about haunted places, hospitals and parks. And we actually made a video once, you guys might have seen it, um, in a tunnel. There's a tunnel in Aichi um, heading up towards Nagano, a really old tunnel that's supposed to be haunted. We went and made a video there once. It was chilly in there, but uh, <laughs> no proof of a ghost being there. But, you know, lots of people believe in places like that being haunted and believe in ghosts being there. And We actually had a couple of friends, we asked if they wanted to go with us to that, who said, no, 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 no. And, and you do get that, you know. So the point is a strong belief in ghosts. It'd be interesting to know the percentage, actually. You know, would estimate it to be really high, really high that people believing in spirits and ghosts. So that's, that's one part. And then the other one is the Oni thing. And Oni, we're always hearing about Oni in Japan. Oni, a sort of demon sort of thing. And that's a huge thing in traditional Japanese life too. You might have seen um, one time we talked about there's a festival where the Oni come. The Oni come. And, and usually what happens is the father of the house or the man of the house usually puts on a mask. Um, uh, Oni mask and they sell them we showed you on another video they sell them in the convenience store and at the supermarket and you buy like a kit right a demon kit and you get a, sort of like a cardboard mask with elastic on it um, and you put that on your face and then the kids get these beans dried beans and the, the, they'll be sitting there eating dinner or doing something and then the, the, the demon appears at the window or the door and the kids, kids say, stand up and they get these beans in their hands and say, go away, go away, and throw beans at the, at the demon until the demon goes away, right? Um, and that's a traditional Japanese thing too, is the, the scaring off of the demons with the, throwing the, de the, the dry beans at them. Um, and then, by the way, the, the demon then sneaks back and picks up all those beans and eats them because they're really tasty. <laughs> That's not uncommon either. The kids often stand there with a bag of those beans, eating some and throwing some and eating some and throwing some, you know. So, so it's really interesting because there's this mainstream belief in demons and ghosts, you know, and you're hearing it all the time, you know, in the literature, in the fictional stuff, in the manga and anime and in the movies. And then in real life as well, you know, in real life as well. And, uh, and the traditional cultural, hesitate to say religious, because it's more, it's, it's a cultural thing with, with the, the belief about the demons and the spirits and, and the ghosts and all that sort of stuff. So it's really interesting. It really is really interesting. Um, people tend to not get in. Some of you might have seen on our interviews playlist, we did a video a while ago asking people if they were religious. And almost everybody said no. It just seems that Japanese people don't see themselves as being religious, you know? But then the next question in that interview was, to all the people was, um, okay, so are you religious? And most of them said no. And then the next question was, do you go to the temple on New Year's Eve and do the ceremony? And almost all of them, if not all of them said yes. <laughs> So it's sort of like they don't think about it. You know, all this stuff is so deep in the culture. They don't think about whether they're religious or what religion they are, you know. They don't even think about that. Um, Japanese people often say that they're born Shinto and die Buddhist. And it's because there are a bunch of ceremonies when people are born here. They, they do a bunch of ceremonies that are usually Shinto. In, in our family, they usually do Shinto and Buddhist ceremonies for the kids when they're born, first born, they put a stamp on their forehead and do a bunch of stuff. Um, but basically they say they're born Shinto because they do these Shinto ceremonies when they're born. And then usually the funerals are Buddhist, not always, but usually the, foot, the, cer the funerals are Buddhist. So that's why they say that, you know, they're, they're born Shinto and they die Buddhist. Um, but really the beliefs and the traditions and the culture sort of overlap both, you know, going to, to Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples is really mainstream. It's really mixed, you know? And quite often, we've showed you before, quite often the same place will have a Buddhist temple and a Shinto shrine together. 
that's really common in Japan too. They don't see it as being mutually exclusive usually, they just see it as, you know, a similar sort of thing as far as they're concerned, you know. So, so yeah, ghosts, ghosts and demons, ghosts and demons, just really mainstream, you know. And just sort of don't get in with the exception of that interview. And you've got to really handle it really carefully too, because not everyone wants to talk about it. Um, made a video once before about superstitions and things. You might have seen that. And it's a bit, there is a lot of sort of, woo about, <laughs> about these sorts of things. You've got to be really careful who you talk to about this stuff and how you talk to them about it, because some people get really uncomfortable talking about that sort of stuff. So it is best to avoid it, usually. Um, but yeah, if you come and spend some time in Japan, you'll definitely have some experience of people referring to ghosts or demons or see examples of it in, in, in all sorts of ways. You know, it's really, really common. <coughs> so with that in mind, that's sort of, you know, not surprising then that this, this movie is so popular. And, and movies like that, they get sort of a cult thing going where people will go and watch them again and again, you know, and, and we know university students who do that, you, you know, they'll tell you they went and saw a movie like that, and then a month later, you, you say what you do on the weekend, oh, I went and saw that movie, hey, didn't you see that last month? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to see it again. There's a lot of that sort of stuff goes on here too, which means when they get a, a, a hit like that, they'll do really well, you know. I mean, they got $100 million, 10 billion yen, 10 billion yen in the first 10 days. That's about $100 million in the first 10 days. And the popularity's, that was just the first 10 days. It's booming, it's peaking. So they're estimating that it'll probably be the biggest grossing movie ever ever released in Japan by the time it's finished, you know? So anyway, there it was. Hopefully someone got something out of that. If you're interested in Kimetsu, Kimetsu, Kimetsu no Yaiba. If you can find that, or look for, if you're searching Netflix or somewhere, look for um, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, and then look for an image similar to what you saw on the on the thumbnail of this video, and, and you'll be able to find it. You you for sure you'll find stuff on the internet. You'll find videos, and you'll find all sorts of stuff. You'll find the original movies and everything on Netflix probably. So anyway, hopefully somebody got something out of that. Maybe an occasional nightmare. There's certainly nightmares happening in our house as a result of it. Ah, anyway, there it was. More videos. Coming soon.